it's day nine and we're gonna deal in casting. No, I'm not gonna teach you some magic like Harry Potter. We're gonna look at how we can use numbers in an effective way. Okay, until now, you probably tried using numbers in some of your questions and some of your answers. And you can't do a lot with them other than just checking that the user's typed in a number in exactly the same way that you've asked. Well, that's a bit of a lie because if statements don't just support our double equal symbol, they support this entire range of symbols that you can see at the moment. These questions are called inequalities. We've got not equal to. So if both boxes are different, that will trigger the if statement. We've got less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. All the classic inequality questions. But if you try to use any of those inequalities, greater than, less than, the way we're doing it at the moment, it just won't work. And the reason for that is because the way input has been working behind the scenes is that input always assumes that what you type in is text. In other words, gets stored in a variable with quotes around it, assuming it's a string. Now, that's a reasonable assumption on the part of the computer because it's being typed in with a keyboard and a keyboard, as you imagine, turns out to be mostly letters. But in certain cases, we want the user to type in numbers and we want the computer to specifically refer to them as numbers. And the way we do this is with a process called casting, where we explicitly tell the computer what you're expecting to be typed is going to be a number. Now, just a little warning, we do get some crashes if the user tries to type anything else. That's perfectly normal at this point. Don't worry about it. Okay, we're going to start with this piece of code that I've written very simply to incorporate the different equality symbols in the if statement condition. In other words, I've written a question that says, what score did you get in our game? Any number over 100,000 should make the computer say winner. Anything less than that should cause it to say try again. Why don't you go and try it and see what happens and then we'll do it together. Okay, so hopefully you saw the same sort of thing happening. Let's say that I got just an amazing score, well over 100,000. Ah, well, it completely crashed the program. It didn't even not work. It completely crashed it. Now let's try and decipher that error message a little bit. It says the greater than symbol is not supported between instances of string and int. Well, what does that mean? Well, have a look at the way that I typed a number in. I put nothing around that number at all. I type that number in absolutely as it comes. That's because to a computer, a number wouldn't have quotes around it. And that's quite interesting because that means when input works and the number goes in, the computer puts quotes around it. And as far as we're concerned, in our variable box, that is the text version of that number. How do we tell the computer, hold on sunshine, that's a number? Well. It sort of depends on what kind of number it is. There are two types of number that we need to care about, an int and a float. An int is a whole number. In other words, there's no decimal part to it. And a float is a number that we expect to have a decimal. It only matters what you pick here if what you're expecting to be typed in is gonna be different. I want a whole number for this score, so I'm gonna use int. And what I'm gonna do is in front of my input, I'm gonna type in int and place the entire input in brackets. Now, of course, the order at which the computer is evaluating this expression is important and it does the brackets first. So the first thing it's going to do is this. It's going to put your score on the screen and take that value in from the computer. Now, at this point, it still has quotes around it. So it thinks it's text. What the int part does is it says, Hold on now, sunshine. This isn't text. This is a whole number. Can you convert it for me? And the computer goes, oh, it is a whole number. Wow, here, have the number back. And essentially, just removes those quotes and hands it back to you. Then it stores it in the variable my score as a number. When we come down to that if question again, it's able to compare two numbers. And if one of them is bigger than the other, it will trigger the if statement. Let's try it. 
well over a hundred thousand and i'm a winner let's check it works though what if i had such a bad run that i got minus a hundred <laughs> it works perfectly we are now able to take any input and turn it into a whole number with int what about a decimal then in this example i'm doing exactly the same thing i'm asking my user to type in pi to three decimal places to see if they remember what it is and all i'm doing is casting that input as a float that means i'm expecting a decimal and so it won't crash if i put a dot and then the numbers after it let's test it out boom worked perfectly let's get it wrong and the if statement is matching up those decimal numbers with reasonable precision which is really really good okay common errors you might get in this well the most obvious one is this this is the most common error we get this invalid syntax error is because we haven't actually finished the brackets on line one but look where it tells us the error is it tells us the errors on line two and this is a common problem that we get when we're combining lots and lots of brackets together now just remember that on each line where there's an open bracket there must be an equivalent close bracket somewhere so in line one we have two open brackets and only one closing bracket meaning the problem is there where the brackets are placed does have meaning so please don't just throw them in willy-nilly to see what happens try and use your logical approach to working out where they should go casting is saying take what the user types in in this bracket and turn it into an int or a float whatever we're looking for and then we can do mathematical comparisons to it why why was the error in the wrong place then well as far as the interpreter is concerned that line hadn't finished line one extended onto line two and then something weird happened in line two so clearly the system is trying its best to guess where that error could be you've got to be mindful of that oftentimes the error will be in just the wrong place entirely always look at the previous line just in case you've missed out brackets or quotes that could be causing it to think that that line runs on forever as usual if you want another extension activity i've broken some code and placed it in the repo for this go and fix it if you want a further challenge your challenge for today we're going to work with a person's age in years and we're going to tell them exactly where they sit in terms of the type of generation they are personally i'm a millennial but we've got this list of generations and the years in which they were born we would like you to ask a user to type in the year they were born and from that identify which generational group they belong in please share your project with us in the community with the publish button and on social media and make sure to hashtag it with replit 100 days of code so we can all see what cool stuff you've been getting up to Day 10 tomorrow, we're going to try taking the fact that the computer now knows that we are using numbers and introduce it to a little bit of math. But ah, don't worry about it. We'll get the computer to do the math for us.